Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Unparalleled Universe for another action figure review. And today we're taking a look at the brand new Beast Kingdom San Diego Comic-Con at home 2020 exclusive dynamic action heroes bank robber version of the Joker. And I am very interested in taking a look at this figure for a couple of different reasons. First off, as far as the dynamic action heroes line from Beast Kingdom goes, I'm kind of lukewarm on it at this point because the only other figure that I have from this line is the Nightmare Batman. And even though I thought that figure was kind of cool, ultimately there wasn't enough going for it for me to go like all in on this line. But I really feel like this Joker is gonna change my mind because what I've seen so far this thing looks incredible. So I'm really excited to talk about it. And the other thing that's really interesting about this is the fact that it's a Comic-Con exclusive and it actually still has the Comic-Con sticker on it, but it's different. It doesn't just say Comic-Con, you know, 2020, like it would in previous years. It actually says Comic-Con at home. So I don't know, that's kind of cool, man. It feels <laughs> a little surreal seeing the sticker say that. It still kind of feels weird that Comic-Con's not happening. I know that it's like small in the grand scheme of things and all the weird stuff that's going on. Comic-Con is very insignificant, but you know, still, it still feels surreal that we're in July and it's not happening. And it makes it feel extra weird to get something like this, you know, Comic-Con at home, crazy. But uh, I feel very fortunate that I have this. So huge shout out to Beast Kingdom for sending this out to me to check out. But yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. So first off, the artwork on this box is awesome. I love the half like Joker bank robber mask on this side and then half Joker face over here. I think that looks really, really cool. And then over here, like I mentioned before, we do have the Comic-Con sticker and then we have a Beast Kingdom exclusive sticker, which says that they made 2,000 copies of this figure and this one is copy 1,965. So that's cool, it's pretty limited. Up here it says the Dark Knight Trilogy. Down here we have some more information on the side. It says Dark Knight, the Joker, bank robber version, one ninth scale action figure. And then on the back, we get a look at the figure and a bunch of the accessories. And then it also lists out all the accessories. And then there's a bunch of other information. On this side, we have the same artwork as the opposite end, but it's uh, black instead of white. So that's cool. And this box is collector friendly. You could just slip off the cover like that. And then you're able to see the figure and all the cool accessories. So this is a really nice looking box, very small and compact, and it does a good job of holding the figure. But anyways, who cares about the box? Let's go ahead and open this up and take a look at the Joker. All right, so here we have the Joker right out of the box. And I think this is a really good looking figure. It definitely looks screen accurate to the way that he appeared in that iconic scene from the Dark Knight. And I just really, really like the overall look of it. I like the way that the clothing is tailored very nicely to the figure itself. It's all very tight. There's no unnecessary bagginess or anything like that. But I'll be honest with you, you could still move the figure around a pretty good amount. I think only his arms are restricted, but everything else is pretty free, even though all the clothing is like tightly tailored to the figure. So that is awesome. But look at that. It looks really, really good. And yeah, like I said, it just looks very screen accurate. It definitely captures the look and feel and the spirit of this version of the Joker. It's crazy how popular this version of the Joker is. I mean, it was only in that one scene, but people love it, myself included. I think it looks dope, especially with the like Cesar Romero inspired mask and everything. It looks good. And speaking of the mask, it does come off and then you're able to see the unmasked Heath Ledger head sculpt. So that's dope, but I'm definitely going to be displaying it like this. I think this is awesome. I just love the way it looks with his head tilted to the side and maybe like holding his gun. But yeah, I think they nailed the overall look. So I'm very happy with what we have going on here so far. And let's go ahead and take a closer look at the details, starting off with the mask, because I do think that most people are probably going to display this figure with the mask on. And I think they did a really great job with it. I love the paintwork. I like how it looks kind of old and used and very realistic. And I really like the fact that it's not just plain white plastic. They put a little bit of like darker blacker like dirtier kind of details in there and they look really really good especially around the eyes and it just really does a, a good job at making it look realistic and used and old and stuff so i like the mask a lot and then there is a elastic band that goes around the head that keeps it in place and it sits very naturally onto the figure's face so you don't have any problem removing it or anything like that and it just looks good pretty much from all angles so i really like the way the mask came out and it is soft plastic and you can remove it and then underneath we have the unmasked joker head and i do think 
this head sculpt could have been a little bit better. I'm not going to say it's bad or anything. I think it does the job. But in my opinion, a figure at this scale that goes for the price that these guys go for, I feel like the face sculpt should probably be a little bit more realistic. I feel like the details are a little soft, so it doesn't look as realistic as it should. It kind of comes across like a toy. And I know that's kind of goofy to say because it's obviously an action figure. It's not a human. But still, I think from some angles, it looks really, really good. And I was able to take some pictures that I was pretty happy with um with without the mask on so that's a good thing but i think for the most part the head is good i just feel like it could have been a little bit better i do like the way that the joker face paint looks with the uh kind of messed up inconsistent white face paint on most of the face and then the eyes are surrounded in black and then we have the uh painted on smile that all looks really good the paint is awesome on it look i like how it fades from the skin color to the white you know yeah, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think of this head sculpt in the comments. Do you think uh, they nailed it? Am I right in saying that it looks a little too much like a toy? Am I just kind of being uh, picky or what? I don't know. From some angles, it looks amazing. But from some other angles, it's it looks a little off, you know. I'm not too sure. But um, the hair looks awesome, though. I love that dark green on there. It's got a bit of a wash. And it looks really, really cool. But yeah, so for the head, I'm going to say that I like it, but it could have been a little bit better. And then moving on to the body here, the tailoring on the suit is very well done. Everything looks good. All the stitching is very clean. And just in general, the suit looks really, really good. One thing I will say, though, is I wish that instead of using Velcro right here where the shirt came together, that they just kind of sewed this together and made it like a... A, you know a solid piece that stays right there as it is now it's velcro and you know how velcro is it doesn't always hold up especially if it's like a smaller piece of velcro like this so i find that mine is kind of it comes apart when i mess with the figure but you know i could just press it back down and, and then we're good to go but i just kind of wish that they had this sewn down and this didn't open up at all I'm not sure why they made it Velcro. Maybe so you could take the shirt off and, I don't know, put on different clothes or something. <laughs> I'm not really interested in that, though. I just wish that, um, I think it would have been a better call just to keep this sewn together. But it does look good. I like the pattern on the shirt. We have these buttons here that look good. Yeah. It looks really, really nice. And then the jacket actually has some purple, like, in the back here. And the pants all look good. I like how, how well it's tailored. I think that's a big like positive with this figure. The clothing is tailored very well, but like it doesn't get in the way of the articulation, so that's awesome stuff. I mean, it does in the shoulders, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, but still, for the most part, it, it's all tailored very nicely without um, you know sacrificing too much articulation, so that's very hard to do, and they did a good job with it. And then let's look at the uh, shoes here. The shoes look really cool. So a lot of detail in them. You can see the shoelaces. And one more thing I want to look at is he comes with a watch. It's going to be hard to see because there's not really a whole lot of paint detail on it. It's pretty much just a black piece of plastic. But you can see that there's like a digital watch on his wrist. So that's cool too. I think a little bit of paint work on that would have gone a long way. But I, I do think it looks good and I appreciate that they included it. And then for the gloves, there's not a whole lot going on. But yeah, I think overall, I like the way the figure looks, especially when I have the mask on. When he has the mask on, he's he's pretty much perfect, in my opinion, other than the Velcro thing with the shirt. But, you know, that's not a big deal at all. That's just the choice they decided to go with. It's really not a problem. It just, I would have preferred it a different way. But aside from that, the figure looks perfect when he has the mask on. And with the mask off, he looks pretty damn good, too. Just, I wouldn't say perfect. And then aside from his mask, he does come with a bunch of other really cool accessories, including multiple sets of hands. So first off, we have a set of open hands and then we have a set of fists we have a set of gun gripping hands and then he has another set of loose kind of relaxed gripping hands and then he does come with two different types of grenades first off he has four of these ones which are the bigger of the two and then he has six of the smaller ones then he comes with two different guns first off we have his pistol and then he also comes with the shotgun and then last but not least, he comes with this really nice looking duffel bag. And let's go ahead and take a closer look at the accessories, starting off with the handgun. I think this is pretty well done. It doesn't cock back or anything like that, but it does have the removable magazine, similar to a Mezco figure. So I think that's dope. And you could pop that back in there. It doesn't go all the way in because this is how the gun looked in the movie. I'm not sure exactly what kind of gun this is, 
but yeah this is dope it's very well done and then next up we have the pump shoddy and this looks really good too i love all the the weathering on there look at that that looks great and this does actually pump so that's nice but yeah look at that that's very well sculpted very well painted this shotgun looks really good and then next up we have the grenades i guess this would kind of be like a smoke grenade or something i'd imagine but I don't know. I'm not a grenade expert, but I do like the way it looks. And then we have this one here, which would be like a, a what would you call it? Like a frag grenade or like an explosive actual grenade. But yeah, this looks really good. Some nice paint work on it. And then the bag. The bag is pretty nice. And it's cool because it came with this tray where you could like store the grenades on the inside of there. It actually came with an empty tray on the inside of the bag. But you could take the tray that the grenades are sitting in in the packaging and just stick that in there. And that's a pretty cool way to store the grenades. That's movie accurate, actually. So I like that. And the bag is really nice, but my only issue with it is that it's really hard to zip and unzip the zippers here. You want to be very careful with those. I feel like if I'm too rough, they could break on me. So definitely going to be careful doing that. But there we go. Actually, it closed without too much problem there. But look at that. That's a good looking bag. Again, it's all dirty and grimy. Very realistic. So yeah, this bag is really cool. And he looks awesome holding it. So I do like this a lot and I love that it gives us a place to store the grenades. Cool. And then he also comes with this cool little stand that says the Joker bank robber version. It also says Dark Knight trilogy inside there. And it looks good and everything, but the post is a little too short. So if he's standing straight up, it won't grab onto like his uh, above his waist there. So it's kind of hard for it to grip onto him. But still, you know, you could definitely make use out of it. And now for some size comparisons. Now this figure is a 1 9th scale figure and honestly I don't have a whole lot of 1 9th scale figures in my collection so I really don't have that much to compare them to. So I'm just going to show you Joker alongside a bunch of other random figures just so you could get a good sense of how big he is. But let's go ahead and get into it starting off with the Joker alongside the Beast Kingdom Dynamic Action Heroes Nightmare Batman and the Hasbro Hyper Real Darth Vader. And then here we have Joker alongside the NECA Yellow Lantern Predator and the Storm Collectibles Mike Tyson. And then here we have him alongside the McFarlane Toys Mortal Kombat 11 Spawn and the Marvel Select Ultron. And then last but not least, of course, we have him alongside the Marvel Legends Pizza Spider-Man and Marvel Legends Bucky Cap. So, 1 9th scale is kind of strange. I feel like there's not a whole lot of other action figure lines that do figures in that scale, so these these things are going to be pretty unique you're not going to be able to integrate them into your collection in most cases this is just going to be like its own standalone line and you're probably going to have to put together a display of just these figures but with that said i think if they all come out as good as this one i'm down for that and as far as the articulation goes, Joker has a lot more going on than I was expecting. There's a whole bunch of points of articulation on here. Some of it is kind of hindered because of the clothing, but there's nothing too bad. For the most part, you could still move the figure around a lot, and I think you could get him into pretty much any pose that you'd want a Joker figure to get into. So I'm happy with the articulation, but let's go ahead and get into it. First off, the head does move side to side, and it looks like he kind of has a a Mezco style neck where he has movement where the upper neck meets the head and movement at the lower neck so that is awesome and you can get his head to tilt a pretty good amount I think I already mentioned side to side but he does have side to side but I really like the tilting because I feel like uh, the Joker is always tilting his head being weird so that's cool and then he could move his head way up to about right there that's a good amount and then you could bring it down to right there and then for the torso, I was kind of surprised with the torso because he does have a mid torso cut and then he also has a like a ball joint at the waist it feels like. So using both of those, look at that. You could crunch forward a really good amount. <laughs> damn, look at damn, that's really good. Awesome. And then you could move it back to about uh, let's see, maybe a little bit more. You can move back to about right there. So, I mean, it's not a crazy amount, but it's more than I would expect from a fully clothed figure, you know? So that's good. And then you also get some side to side using those two joints, and he can also twist. So it's very similar to a Mezco torso setup. So that's a good thing. And then he does have a butterfly shoulder in there, but here's where things get really restricted. And that's because he has two layers of clothing. He's got the undershirt and the jacket. So 
there's definitely some restrictions, but he does have a butterfly joint in there. And then he also has a ball joint, so his arm can come up to about right there. Let's see, there we go. That's a pretty good amount considering that there's two layers of clothing. So that's good. And then it could come back a pretty good amount too, so that's good. And then you could bring his arm out to the side. And it feels like he has a, yeah, he has an upper bicep swivel. And then he has double jointed elbows, which get a good bend. But again, they're kind of hard to keep in place because of the clothing. But still, there's a pretty good bend to the elbow. And then at the wrist, he has a ball joint that also has a hinge. So you could swivel where the ball joint meets the actual forearm, and you could swivel at the hand itself. And then for the legs, what do we have going on for the legs? It's kind of hard to tell, but his leg could come out to the side to about right there. He's not going to do the splits because of the pants, but that's okay to the side comes forward a really good amount you could actually get him to sit down look at that that's pretty good and then he does have is there an upper thigh swivel in there uh, there's a bit of a swivel it looks like it's just kind of swiveling on the ball joint but that's okay it gives you enough movement and then he has double jointed knees whoa look at that bam those <laughs> that's really good and then let's see here, no lower leg swivel or anything, but you do have a swivel right here at the ankle. It's the same, same kind of joint that we have at the wrist where it's a ball joint that's going into the lower leg and into the foot. So you have a swivel there, then a hinge, and then you also have rocking ankles at the foot itself. And then last but not least, we have a toe hinge. So yeah, like I said, it's a good amount of articulation for a figure like this. All right, guys, so overall, I think this is a really good figure, and I feel like Beast Kingdom did a great job at bringing this version of Joker to life. The figure itself looks very nice. I love the soft goods. I like the way that they're tailored so perfectly to the figure itself, but it really doesn't hinder the articulation all that much. You could still pose the figure around and mess with it and enjoy it, so I'm very happy about that. The overall look of the figure is pretty much perfect. Like I said, it looks like he jumped right out of that movie scene. So that is super dope. The accessories are nice too. I think he comes with pretty much everything that you'd want from this version of Joker. There's always other stuff that you could throw in there, but I feel like they gave him everything that he needs. He has multiple guns, a bunch of hands, the duffel bag, the grenades, the mask. I think that's pretty much all you absolutely need for this version of Joker. Maybe they could have thrown in some cards or something extra like that, but I'm sure we'll see those kind of things with the regular release of the Dark Knight Joker. So I'm looking forward to that. And then as far as the articulation goes, I was really surprised by how much I was able to move the figure around because I really wasn't expecting that so that's good stuff as far as flaws go probably the head sculpt I would say that that's maybe the only downside it's not horrible or anything but I just wish that it was a little bit better I wish that it was a little bit more detailed I feel like the sculpt on it is a little soft and some of the details get lost overall I think it does its job and it captures the look of Heath Ledger's Joker and in most cases you could definitely make it work like I took some pictures that I'm pretty happy with without the mask on but I think for most people, they're gonna grab that and look at the head and be like, oh, it could be a little bit better. But with that said, I feel like no one out there has really nailed the Heath Ledger head sculpt quite yet. So it's, I don't know, it's one of those things that's kind of strange, but th this one here is decent. It could have been a little bit better. And then aside from that, there's a couple of things I feel like they could have done differently with the cloth. Like I, I kind of wish that the shirt didn't have the Velcro on it. I wish that it was just kind of sewn together, sewn in place and wasn't removable. As it is, it has the Velcro that kind of that's able to to be removed but at the same time it kind of makes it the clothes look thicker than it should in certain areas like around the collar so i just wish that that was just one piece or just sewn together so it was flatter but luckily when you have the mask on you can't even tell how big the collar is so you could definitely make it work but yeah overall i think this figure is like a huge success and it's like leaps and bounds better than the uh, nightmare batman that i received a couple of months ago if the dark knight returns joker that's coming out like later this year is nearly as good as this then I'm gonna be super happy because I don't feel like there's a, any good Dark Knight jokers out there the NECA one is cool Mafex has made a couple I think figure arts has one Mattel has a bunch of garbage no one has done a really good 
Heath Ledger, Dark Knight, Joker with the purple. I think that Beast Kingdom might be might have the best one out there. We'll see. If it's if it's as good as this, they're gonna have the best one out there for sure. I do hope that they fine tune the head sculpt a little bit, but even if they don't, I still think it's gonna be the best one. And having this figure makes me really excited about not only that Joker, but also Jack Sparrow. I cannot wait for that Jack Sparrow figure. It looks so good. I hope they use the same body that they used on here so it has all that articulation. But yeah, man, I'm excited about those figures. And this guy here, it, it didn't really convince me to go back and buy all the other dynamic action heroes that Beast Kingdom has made, but it's definitely made me excited for the ones that are on the way, like the ones that have the soft goods and stuff like that. I'm definitely interested in any figures that have soft goods, a bunch of articulation, and a bunch of accessories. So, you know, after the Nightmare Batman, I was kind of like skeptical on the line, you know, but after having this one, I'm completely turned around. But anyways, I think that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And also, in the description, I'm going to leave a bunch of links to some Beast Kingdom uh, websites and Facebook pages and all that kind of stuff. Be sure to check all those things out. Huge thank you to those guys for sending this figure out to me to review. I'm so happy that you did because I'm very pleasantly surprised with this figure. So thank you so much. But anyways, that's it. Peace.